Good morning, everybody. So this morning before I leave the house to head to the shop, I'm going to get the dimensions on a photograph that I got from a, a photographer that I follow on Instagram. I'll put her link in the description. Uh, amazing picture of a mountain range, um, but I'm gonna do a special frame for it, a little side project. Gonna do the uh, Japanese burnt wood effect on some white oak uh, to build a picture frame for this. So I'm gonna be working on that today. Uh, so I'm gonna get the dimensions and I'll head to the shop. back at the shop and I was looking around through my wood stash and I don't have enough white oak to do it uh, but that's okay I found some nice cedar pieces and uh, so I'm going to use that instead and really that's more traditional the shosugi bond the, the Japanese burnt wood uh, is typically cedar wood anyway so this will be more true to the tradition so uh, I found the piece and I'm going to start cutting it up and, and preparing it. Man, that cedar wood smells good. Did I mention how good this stuff smells? It's amazing. So I cut my pieces and you can see what I'm what I'm doing here. The picture's mounted on a one inch thick uh, backer backer piece of uh, I believe it's just MDF. So my piece of cedar, I cut this this one and one sixteenth, then I've got a three sixteenths that's gonna overhang, overlap the front of the picture. The picture goes from edge to edge, so I don't want to cover up any of the picture but I do want to create just a little little overlap uh, so the frame, you know, so there's no gaps or anything. So that's what I'm doing there. Um, I came upstairs, I'm gonna cut the miters on my frame on my old door machine. Uh, you can see it's two saws, both dedicated 45. And uh, we used to cut hundreds and hundreds of linear feet of, of door molding up here when we used to build our own doors. I, I outsource it now because honestly, it's uh, cheaper and quicker just to let somebody else build them. I outsource it to TNT Doors out in Covington, Georgia. They do an amazing job and, and I can't build the doors for what they charge me. So it's a win-win for me. I just order them, they build them, it lets me spend my time doing other things. So anyway, I'm gonna cut these pieces to length and uh, I'll be right back. And you know, you could just as easily use your regular miter saw. For this I'm just using it because I have it and here I'm just making sure that I can cut out that ugly part
All right, so I cut my four pieces. They are ready to go. Um, I videoed the other step up there. I was using my Hoffman machine to cut these keys in. Um, I touched the red button on my phone, but it didn't record. I guess I didn't touch it hard enough. Uh, but anyway, what that machine does, it cuts those slots in it, and I've got some plastic keys that go in there. I'll show you that in a second. So this is another one of those specialty tools that uh, I know most people don't have. I'm simply using it because I have it. Uh, but there's a thousand other ways you can make this frame. Uh, you can biscuit it or domino or, or just glue it and strap it. Uh, just whatever you have access to. Uh, now you can see it's not very deep. Um, only about five eighths of an inch. That's okay. I just want it to hold until the glue dries. When we used to use that machine for doors, our door stock was only typically three quarter. So those keys were plenty. Uh, plenty tall enough. But anyway, these are just gonna hold it until the glue dries. And then uh, when I burn the wood later on, I'm not gonna burn the back. So there's no danger of me melting the keys or anything. Uh, so it'll be a nice solid, but a pretty quick frame. So as you can see, that is a super quick way to make a frame. And it's very efficient. Those plastic keys hold the hold it flush and it holds it perfectly tight. And then I know my machine, my saw upstairs cut those at a dead, dead perfect 45. So I know my frame is nice and square. Let's get any glue squeeze out cleaned up. Look at that. That's a nice, that's a good looking frame. Just a quick once over to make sure everything's even and then you're done. It's as easy as that.
So here I'm just using a soft nylon brush. Uh, I'm not going to use a wire brush because I don't want to scratch the soft wood and uh, I want to leave a good bit of the char on the surface. So if any professional picture framers ever see this video, I apologize. <laughs> this is not a how-to video. This is just me knocking it out real quick in the shop Friday morning. Uh, just trying to get it done so that I can get it hung over the weekend. I know this is not the right way to do it. Not the professional way to do it by any means. But it is solid. It's going to hold the picture in there nicely. Uh, and then when I hang it, I think it's going to look just, just right. Or just right enough.